What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with John Lee, CEO and Executive Chairman of Flying Nickel Mining. It's a pleasure to have you back on, John. How are you doing today? Good to be back on your show, Aaron, and Happy New Year, and soon Happy Chinese New Year in, in three days' time. Yes, that's correct. It's this weekend, so it's been a little while since we last spoke. Uh, let's start by getting an update on the company and everything that you've been up to. Right, Aaron. Uh, Flying Nickel is a new company that... that uh, listed on the Toronto Ventures Exchange, the symbol is Flynn, F-L-Y-N, in March. As, as you recall, when I came on your show, nickel was in that uh, on that precipice of a, what well, turned out to be one of the largest unprecedented nickel run in history. Uh, since then, um, what well, the company's always set out its mandate for 2022, which was to conduct a maiden drill program since we acquired the project in 2021 and complete the feasibility study and then uh, make uh, good progress on the permitting front. So I'm, I'm, I'll be pleased to report that we make uh, good, good strides on all three fronts. Um, it is a nickel project. The flagship project, uh, is in, the name is Minago, and it's located on the Thompson Nickel Belt. That is the second largest nickel camp in North America based on 5 billion pounds of nickel production in his, in his history. It's a very unique project. So the company reported multiple platinum and palladium intersections of up to 9.4 grams per ton from historic Monago drill holes. Further PGM assays pending from 97 drill holes. That's over 7,000 meters of sections. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, Aaron, we acquired the project in 2021 uh, based on the merit of its nickel resource. And um, the project had over well over $50 million spent on it, majorities on drilling. So it had over 85,000 meters of drilling, and there's a resource of over a billion pounds of nickel at a 0.7% nickel that's open pit optimized. So that is all being known in the market. And that's what has driven the uh, fly nickel share price to $1.40 at the IPO, over 100 million market cap. Right now it's less than 10. Um, as we, as, as fly nickel did its first round of drill program in 2022, and the assays that came out in September and October and November. And what we noticed is that, hey, there is quite a lot of platinum and palladium in the assays. And it's never been really talked about before. What's going on? Um, and some of the assays are 50, 60 meters, close to one gram of platinum, palladium, and gold. Again, I mean, that is a very wide intersection with really appreciable um, PGM uh, uh, content of, of, a, of a gram. A gram, again, is over $60. Mm -hmm. So I instructed uh, our team to go back to some of the historical drill cores and then the, the, the looking at the, uh, the, the, uh, the assays from the historical past. It turned out, Aaron, only 20% of the cores have been assayed for PGM. And the, uh, the, the cores that had been assayed for PGM, the assays were actually not released to the general market. And there was a very close correlation between the nickel content and the PGM content, uh, logically. And this is the Thompson nickel belt. So it's the, ge the geology is very well known. So uh, we were scratching our heads and what's going on. And I, the only conclusion was that the project was under development at a relatively high nickel prices to the PGM prices. A majority of the drill holes were made prior to year 2000. That's before the invention of the catalytic converters. So... I, so that I think the previous operator were focusing so much on 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 on, on uh, nickel as a priority, and they were and the PGM dimension was completely overlooked. So uh, so we go back to the archive, we we'll pull out some of the uh, representative, and these assays were re released in the news release. There there are eight holes we released, as well as the drill holes that we uh, uh, fly nickel drilled. They all have PGM intersections. So they're and they're representative. They're not cherry picked uh, uh, assays, but they're more representative different different um, locations uh, in 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 the deposit. So that's a very exciting development. And uh, all in all, as, as as stated in the news release, we have uh, meticulously sort of went to the warehouse looking at the different cores that we need to uh, re not yet reassay for PGM in order to come up with the PGM resource, which we are very confident based on the homework that we have done in the last three months, that uh, there will be a P there were likely, highly likely to be a PGM resource. And what the investor will be looking for the, for the next uh, three to four months up till June is continued uh, assays of PGM results on a rolling basis. Uh, and, um, and um, you know, this is very exciting and easily would, uh, would uh, transform Inago from an already a very, 
a quality a unique exceptional project into something uh, of, a, of a monster uh, of PGM and nickel in Canada, which is, is, which is quite rare. Um, all the quality wines is being taken over by the Valets and Glencore. So this is one of the very, very few, maybe less than five out there in Canada that has a PGM and a, uh, a PGM and a nickel and a nickel uh, open pitable optimi open pit optimized nickel project in Canada. Very exciting. So Flying Nickel recently provided an update on its Monago Nickel PGM project, um, Environmental Act License, Impact Benefit Agreement, and Feasibility Study. What does this mean for the company? Right. So uh, I think everyone you're referring to that news release we put out two days ago, and that is yeah. just an update from uh, some of the objectives that the company set out on, on set of 2022. Um, the feasibility study is is going very well, but given the new sort of PGM angle we brought into the equation, we would rather defer the uh, postpone the um, or incorporate we will postpone the release of the feasibility study until we incorporate the PGM uh, economics into the feasibility study. Um, on the permitting front, we have been working very closely with the Manitoba government as well as the First Nations Norway House First Nations community. Everybody is very supportive of the project, and we're very appreciative and grateful of their of their time and efforts. So we've been talking to uh, all the stakeholders on a monthly basis, and uh, all the reviews of the uh, permitting has been completed, and we really would expect uh, a rendering of, of, of a decision for the Environmental Act license uh, before the first half of 2023. There has been a slight delay. Uh, it's just because of the of different different workings and the and the outside of our control. Uh, but this this environmental act license will be the last piece of permit required for the construction to start. So there are no further federal permits required. All the environmental studies have been completed, and um, so you know that is really put it as as you know the last mile where we are reaching out. Uh, before we can make that construction decision. And that will also sort of gel very well with the timing of the of the update of the feasibility study. And um, so that's in the First Nations, uh, we're going up there. Our team is going up there next week. Um, we have hammer, hammered out a number of, um, of, uh, of issues and concerns. We made great strides. And we're negotiating, Aaron, just to um, just to be clear, is the final impact benefit assessment. It's not MOU. That's already been done last last year. So we're really getting down to the nitty gritty details of, of an agreement that will govern over the lifetime of the mine. So I think investor will reasonably be also understood that we just wanna make sure everything is complete and, and, and well, well conceived. And then, and then I think during that process also we discovered there are some byproduct credits such as limestone and granite of which that can help pay, uh, that can help, um, that can help uh, reduce the capex of the project. So all in all, we don't see any material uh, showstoppers, and uh, it's a function of time. And uh, even though there haven't been a whole lot of news out of Fly Nickel last year, uh, the best is yet to come. So we're looking forward to uh, provide further updates in the first half of, of this year. So let's talk about the commodity markets now. You know, lithium always gets the spotlight for some reason when it comes to EV metals. Uh, why should investors be paying attention to nickel versus other commodities out there? <laughs> Well, Aaron, I am a different generation from you. Uh, <laughs> five years ago, nobody cared about lithium in Canada, <laughs> even though lithium was already bubbling in Australia and in China. And you had a number of lithium companies actually went bankrupt in Quebec, even though the writing was on the wall. So this is, uh, to me, I'm not too concerned about it. This is a deja vu all over again. And this is nothing to do with, um, you know, Canada is a latecomer, not because not because uh, because you guys are well endowed in oil, in hydro, in 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 all the energy, in natural gas. So you don't need to be worrying about uh, uh, electric vehicles, right? You have the hydros and the uranium and uranium as well. Mm -hmm. So, but the trend is is unequivocal and undeniable, and the uh, the EV electric vehicles are here to stay. Recently, Tesla a week ago just surpassed BMW as the number one luxury uh, vehicle sales in the United States for 2022. And this is only the starting point. You're looking at elect uh, passenger vehicles and you look at trucks, look at the Hummer. Uh, they're doing zero to 60 in like 3.5 seconds. And it's taking probably three times as much, as much nickel as needed for Hummer to be doing that sort of acceleration given its weight. 
and also that um, Eric, in the very short span of the battery development in the last five years under Tesla and Panasonic and 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 the likes and Porsche and uh, and uh, and Audi, the nickel battery, the nickel MNC A11, nickel. Uh, uh, manganese and cobalt is 80% nickel is the de facto standards for high performance batteries. It's going to be at least five years before other alternatives are found. How do I know that, Aaron? We've been approached by some of the largest auto and battery, battery manufacturers. They share their roadmap with us and, and nickel is the dominant focus of, of their strategy, not to mention they have other uh, plan Bs and plan C, but we see the demand for nickel five five years out is solid. It's only going to grow. And um, as well, also Tesla recently had a 20% discount they just announced. So they're shifting their strategy from high-end selective uh, uh, and uh, and limited supply to, to, to mass consumption. Okay. So that will benefit investors and, 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 uh, and the general public, but, but at the expense of, of higher nickel consumption. And what that means is going to be even more nickel needed than it was originally forecasted. And, and it's no surprise that Elon Musk three years ago said, mine as much nickel as you can. If you can mine nickel responsibly, responsibly environmentally friendly, we'll give you a giant fat contract. And, um, and uh, you know, since the nickel has gone up 40, 30, 40% at $12.50, it's still 30, it's 70% down from $50 peak in 2022, but it's 50% higher. So, I think that uh, my twenty my twenty twenty three target for nickel is gonna be uh, somewhere between twelve fifty to fifty dollar. It's tough to say because once nickel passed fifteen, there's really no historical precedence on how it could go. Kind of like silver past fifty. Mm -hmm. So I would just pick a round number halfway through around twenty to twenty five as twenty twenty uh, as my target for nickel for twenty twenty three. And last but not least. You know, Elon is so bought into nickel. He's done deal with some of the largest nickel producers in Valley, in Indonesia, Madagascar. And um, and that's why he openly talked about their batteries are not lithium batteries. They're actually nickel batteries. Just go to the extent of the commitment and the uh, the maturity and the standards of, of, of batteries involving nickel, Aaron, going forward. It's going to be an exciting year. Let's see what happens when we have you back on. Uh, so... What makes Flying Nickel such a unique project compared to other competitors or companies out there? Well, Aaron, again, um, I've been in the industry for more than 20 years uh, in the mining industry. First 10 years as an investor and second 10 years as running a, as running a company, first as a hobby and then turning into a decade <laughs> old job is uh, I, I am probably the uh the uh C, the junior mining ceo that's done most nickel deals so i know nickel probably better than 99% of the junior mining ceos out there and and minago is the one that that i love the most and that i targeted i put my eye on 10 years ago so i know i've done i've acquired nickel project in the yukon in 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 ontario in Sudbury, and uh, in manitoba elsewhere in lynn lake and this Minago project is by bar none the best. Why? Exceptional open pit optimized grade at 0 0.74 RM. Because of lack of investment in nickel sulfide space, the average grade for nickel uh, open pit sulfide mines 10 years ago, 2005, was 0 0.7, where Minago was in that bracket. But today is 0.4. So that put Minago a leg above and beyond the current open pit head grades for nickel sulfide project. By 2030, based on credible research, Aaron, that average nickel grade for open pit nickel sulfide mine is going to go to 0.25. Mm -hmm. So Minago is going to only become more valuable coming going from now. And second, besides the 0 0.74 grade, which is three, two to three times higher than all of our competitors or peers, is, is probably the greenest nickel um, mine in the world because Manitoba is 99% hydro versus Ontario for say 75. So we are pro we are a third greener than 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 uh, we're 30% green more green than than the Sudbury uh, peers and we are 100% greener than the guys in Indonesia because they rely on uh, coal fire power plants for their power generation. And the third is our permitting stage. As I said, potentially in the next within the next six months, the project could be green lighted for a construction decision. And last but not least, we throw in that PGM angle 
just make the project even more compelling, especially at the current market cap of less than $10 million, which is a fraction, one seventh of all the money that's being ever put into the project so far. Yeah. So if you had to narrow it down to, let's say the top three things for 2023, what are you most excited about? For the, for the company? Yeah. You're going to see continue rolling out of the PGM resources. Um, I mean, Aaron, we are a company of $10 million market cap, not, not, not 100, not 300. So we're not waiting for some very sophisticated decisions or some, 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 some incredible milestones. Investors from now uh, until the end of June could expect rolling continued assets of PGMs. And then, of course, we're going to tabulate the prior asset nickel results as well to go along with the PGM assays. So you're going to see this continued uh, PGM assays and then right along with their higher silver price, uh, so nickel prices, uh, uh, fingers crossed. And then sometime down the road this year, 2023, we feel pretty confident we can get the green light for this permit uh, and announce a construction decision. And if all goes well, Aaron, I believe that Minago is one of the very few projects that can actually churn nickel out, out of the ground 2026 or 2027. Everybody else is still at a very preliminary stage, either either a on the permitting or on, on their feasibility study. Aaron? Look forward to watching your progress. So where should investors go for more information on the company? Yeah, we are on the Chase's Ventures, uh, F-L-Y-N, Flynn, and OTC, QB, F-L-Y-N-F. The company's uh, homepage is flynickel.com, F-L-Y-Nickel.com. Aaron, for those that know me, I used to be very uh, active in Twitter, but uh, I closed all my uh, futures position in metals. I did a pretty good run, but I, I think that uh, from where we are, the uh, the leverage on mining on mining shares, especially selected juniors with well-established resource and political safe jurisdiction, is going to have a lot more torque uh, on 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 the uh, on, on on your investment. I mean. You know, for these guys cutting silver at 17, they already made 50% of their money. Mm -hmm. And and then um and I whereas I think for junior mining companies right now, you can you can have a three, five baggers, even 10 baggers, uh, for the ones that you do your you that you uh, you do your homework well and then the companies with good assets, Aaron. Agreed, John. Well, thank you so much for all those updates. I look forward to having you back on very shortly. Thank you. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.